If you want to start with photography, there are a lot of things to learn, a lot of things to buy and a lot of things to take into consideration. Learning the absolute basics of photography, however, is the most important part. So if you want to start with photography or you just like photography and you want to get better at it, this is the video for you. Let's go! What's up guys, my name is Niels, I'm a Dutch photographer and on this YouTube channel I make videos with the aim to educate, inform and entertain you about photography. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So about photography, photography is something you do with a camera. Inside that camera there is a sensor. Way back in the day, ancient human beings used things called analog cameras and inside those cameras there are things called film. These analog cameras didn't have sensors, but they used this stuff called film to expose the image. Uh, luckily, these days we have state-of-the-art technology, so we don't have to hassle with film. Same with analog film, the digital sensor in your camera needs to be exposed to light to create an image. If this image is too dark, your camera hasn't captured enough light, so the image is underexposed. If the image is too bright, your camera has captured too much light, so the image is overexposed. There are three things you can use to alter the way your camera captures light. And those three things combined are called the exposure triangle. The exposure triangle consists of shutter speed, aperture and ISO. And in this video, I will be explaining what these things are, what they do, and how you can use them to improve your photography. First, let's talk about shutter speed. Shutter speed is the amount of time your camera captures light. In a DSLR, there's a mirror that flips up or flips down to expose the sensor to light. And in a compact camera or in a mirrorless camera, there is no mirror, so the exposure is done all digital. Shutter speed has a direct effect on motion. Everything that moves while your camera is capturing light will come out blurred and we call that motion blur. Whenever you see a sports photo where a ball is being shot and it's in the air without it being blurry or you can see drops of water just hanging in the air, you know that that photo was taken with a very short shutter speed. Shutter speeds are usually a part of a second, such as one thousandth or one one hundredth or one thirtieth of a second. But they can also be a few seconds or a lot of seconds. What you have to keep in mind though is that shutter speed always has a direct effect on motion. Next there is aperture, where shutter speed has to do with the amount of time your camera captures light. Aperture is the size of the opening inside your lens where the light enters your camera. And where shutter speed influences motion blur, aperture influences depth of field. Depth of field is the part of what's in front of you that's in focus. With a shallow depth of field, only a small part of what's in front of you is in focus. And everything in front of that and everything behind that will be out of focus, will be blurry. And a blurry background is something we call bokeh. So let me try to show you what aperture does to your photo. This is at f2.8. All right, and now let's move things up. F4, F5.6, F8, F18, and F22, which is the highest F number and the smallest opening this lens has to offer. So you can really see here that the higher the F number gets, the less blurry the background gets. You can use aperture to make your photos more interesting or really put emphasis at a certain subject. Basically you can tell the viewer what they should look for and what they should look at in your photo. But sometimes you don't want a blurry background. Sometimes you want everything from the front to the back to be in focus and you use this by using your aperture as well. This is very handy for landscape or architecture photography. Aperture is measured in F numbers and a shallow depth of field is caused by a big opening in your lens and it has a low F number such as 1.4, 1.8 or 2.8. A large depth of field is called by a small opening in your lens and it has a higher F number such as F14, 16 or F18. So we talked about shutter speed which corresponds to motion blur, we talked about aperture which corresponds to depth of field and the third part of the exposure triangle is ISO which basically is your camera's sensitivity to light. 
You have to capture enough light to correctly expose a photo. But if your aperture is all the way open and you can't have any longer shutter speeds because of the motion blur, what you gonna do? Well, you're gonna increase your camera's sensitivity to light by turning the ISO up. Usually an ISO of 100 is the lowest setting and it goes up like 200, 400, 800, 3200 and depending on the camera it keeps on going up. Where shutter speed corresponds to motion blur and aperture corresponds to depth of field, you could say that ISO corresponds to noise. The higher your ISO, the noisier your photo will be. And you can determine by yourself what you feel is an acceptable amount of noise in your photo. The best thing you can do is take the same photo over and over again while increasing your ISO until it becomes so noisy you can't use the photo anymore. A small side note from this is that you have to be very careful when zooming in on a big screen because you will always see some noise. When you print your photo however, the noise will probably be a lot more acceptable and personally I don't mind a little noise. I also made a document about the exposure triangle and you can download it in the link below. And it's very handy to remember all the stuff I'm trying to tell you. And you can put it in your camera bag, hang it on the wall, but you really should download it because it's very, a very handy tool. So now that you kind of know about shutter speed, aperture and ISO, how do you use it to correctly expose a photo? Well, luckily all of the cameras have a thing called a light meter. This means that it is constantly measuring the amount of light it needs to correctly expose a photo. And your camera has a couple of modes. And with these modes, you can determine what part of the exposure triangle you want to set and what part of the exposure triangle you want your camera to calculate. For instance, in manual mode, it's all up to you. You set the shutter speed, you set the ISO and the aperture, and you have to look at the light meter to determine whether or not your settings are correct. In aperture priority mode, you set the aperture and the ISO and your camera calculates what kind of shutter speed it needs to correctly expose the photo. There are a lot of modes on your camera and if you want me to make a video where I explain what each mode does, please comment below. What's important to know is what type of image you want to create first and foremost. Like this of a monk walking by and this one of a woman and her child on her bike. When taking these photos, I knew I wanted to emphasize the motion. So in these photos, the shutter speed is most important and what ISO or what aperture I will be using is less important. In this photo, however, I really wanted that blurry background. So I knew I wanted my aperture to be at f2.8, which is all the way open. What shutter speed I needed for this shot really didn't matter. So it's really up to the result of the photo that determines what part of the exposure triangle you need. This really is the foundation of photography and mastering the exposure triangle is key if you want to take great photos. That's it for now guys, there's a lot more to talk about but in this video I wanted to cover the basics of the basics and I think that this is the most hard and most important part of photography. I hope you like this video and if you want me to do more of the educational stuff then please comment below. In the next video I will be out on the streets again doing some real photography but it's cold and it's rainy so I didn't mind doing this one from a warm and comfy room. If you haven't done so please subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.